There we go. Okay, so the topic is I can use sequences in context. So would you write the word context right here? And we've talked about this before. This is similar to when we're like learning new words. If we read something and we can kind of can figure it out from the setting, that's what we mean by figuring it out in context. So we're going to see the same two sequences that we've been using. We're going to use arithmetic and geometric sequences. Notice that the formulas are still on the board here. We're going to use those to figure out some more complicated things, some things that we can actually use in a, in a day to day basis. So what we've got right here is we've got a graph and over here we've got a table. And remember, if we're doing arithmetic, we're using this formula right here, a sub n, and you can go ahead and write this down. Remember, it's the common difference times n plus a naught. So that's arithmetic. And for geometric, it's going to be a sub n equals, it's going to be a naught. And then we have that common ratio and we raise it to the n. So these are those simplified formulas that we were talking about. So we do have to look at this graph and we have to figure out what's going on here. So can somebody tell us what's going on in that first graph? Using the vocabulary that we've been talking about with arithmetic, geometric, linear, exponential, all that sort of stuff. Ooh, nice. This is the audience participation portion of it. Okay, anything, just need to throw out an answer. What do you think, Ella? They're multiplied by two. Okay, I can kind of see that. If we go from the 25 to the 50 to the 100, we are multiplying by two. But remember, we usually go from left to right. So what's actually happening is we're going from 100 to 50 to 25. Notice this is zero, then one, then two. So we're kind of going in that order. So you're really close. Cooper, you want to adjust that? Multiply by one half. Multiply by one half. If we're multiplying by one half, Danny, is that arithmetic or geometric? geometric. So we're going to go ahead and write geo right here. And we're going to write r equals one half. If we're multiplying by the same thing every time, that's going to be geometric. Oh, by the way, what's the shape of the graph? What shape would this be? If we were to do the whole thing? Ari? Exponential. Exponential. Very good. Remember, if it's geometric, what we're talking about is if we looked at it on a, on a graph, it would have an exponential shape to it. So the formula on this one is going to be a sub n. We're going to follow this one right here. We need the common ratio, which is one half. We're going to raise that to the n. And then we're going to key off one particular number on the graph or the table. We're looking at one of these coordinates. Got a couple hands up. Megan, what is it? 100. 100. It's so this one right here. Can you tell us how you knew that? Uh, Zero on the, um, on the X axis. Very good. That's a naught. It's zero on the X. So this is going to be a 100. So we're going to put a 100 here. We're going to circle it. We're done with that. That's what we did the last couple of days. We were taking information from a table or from a graph, and we were just writing a formula for a sequence. We can tell by the shape of it that it's exponential. We can also tell by looking at the numbers. If they go from 100 to 50 to 25 to 12.5, they're getting cut in half every single time. Okay. Now, I'm going to ask Marcus, if you take a look at this next table on B, can you tell what's going on there? He says adding four. Okay. Damien, is he right? Yeah. How do you know he's right? Goes from negative five to negative one and then from okay, three to seven and so forth. So you can check and see that the common difference in here is always going to be four. Okay, um, Marcus, back to you. Is it a plus four or a minus four? A, plus four? a positive four. So that means it's got a common difference. That means it's arithmetic. What other name could we throw out here with arithmetic? What other name? Bradley? Was this a hand up? No. Danny? Linear. linear. Okay. If it's arithmetic, it's going to be linear. So we can't see that just by looking at a table, but if we plotted these points, they would line up, they'd make a nice straight line. We're not doing the entire line. We're not connecting all the pieces. We're just talking about those particular dots right there. 
So we've got enough information. We've got the common difference. We know that it's arithmetic. It would be a linear shape if we were to graph it. So we're going to use this formula right here. We're going to write a sub n equals. Somebody help me out. What is it, Ella? 4n. You say plus 3, okay? okay. Plus 4? Plus 3? Yeah. You sure? Okay, Ella is sure. Anybody agree with that? Okay, Allie, tell us why you agree. Yeah, this, it says the zero of term. This one right here, that one's a naught. So this is going to be plus three. We're going to put a circle around it and we're all set. Okay, now, if you can do that, you can do the assignment today. We just need to be able to pick that information out from the context of a problem. So there are two little last warm-up questions right here. It says, if a jacket went on sale for 7% off, what percent represents what we actually pay? And the next one is, a fidget spinner was marked up 15%. What percent do we actually end up paying? So think about this one for a minute. If it's 7% off, what percent do we actually end up paying? Tristan, what do you think? Tristan says 93. Okay, Camry, do you agree with him? Okay, Isaac, do you agree? Okay, how, how'd you get 93? Subtracting seven. Subtracting seven from 100%. So we're gonna start off with 100% and then we're gonna have a discount that gets marked down 7%. So if we do a little subtraction problem, we get 93%. So the answer on this one is 93%. Just go ahead and circle that. I do have just kind of a side question for you. If you were to put 93% in your calculator, how do you put 93% into the calculator? We, we do this almost every day when we're correcting assignments. Megan? You put, uh, it's like 0 0.93. Point 0.93, point 0.93, very good, okay? All right, next question. If the fidget spinner is marked up 15%, what percent re represents the percent you actually pay? More than one hand, come on. Ooh, I might just have to call on people who don't have their hand up. I'm going to. Bradley, what do you think? Come on. This one right here, if a fidget spinner is marked up 15%, what percent do we actually pay? 115. Peyton, you think it's 115? Okay. Cooper? Yes. Yes? Tell us how. Because um, it's going up 15% and then we add up 15 and Very good. It's going up 15%. So excellent. So it starts off at 100%. It gets marked up 15%. So we're going to pay 115% of the actual price. Now, as a decimal, what's 115%? I know Megan knows. Marcus has his hand up, he knows. 115%. What did we do every single time? Okay, Megan, tell us what the answer is and tell us how you got it. Well, okay. So it's, um, so remember the, um, the, 90, the 93% was, uh, which is 0.93? Well, the 115 will be uh, 1.15 uh, because it's all of that percentage stuff plus the 15 more. Okay, the 100% plus the 15 more. Okay, can you tell us more about, so on this one you said it was 0. 0.93. How many decimal places did we move it? Just two. Two. So how many decimal places do we move this one? Two. Just two. So the decimal as a percent, or the, the percent as a decimal would be 1.15. I'm going to put a dotted circle around that, and I'm going to highlight it. We're going to come back, and we're going to see that again in just a minute. Okay, so we're going to slide down here. And we're going to talk about these problems. They look like they're really long. I think you'll like these. These are almost as easy as the ones we've been doing for the last couple of days. One of the most useful applications of sequences is if we can use them and apply them in a real world situation. So we're gonna to need to put all of this stuff together to figure it out in the context. And we're gonna to need to remember, we usually start off with an index of one, 
But as we saw in the warm up, sometimes it's a good idea to just key off that zeroth term. Hey, which one corresponds to zero? So we're going to want to make sure that we grab that each time, either from a table or a graph or from the information. So if you follow along here, I think you're going to find this way easier than what it looks like. So here's what we're going to do. Part A it says write out a few, the first few terms of the sequence. So they'll describe what's going on. Determine whether the sequence is arithmetic or geometric. What word could we use for arithmetic? Shaley? Linear. Okay. Ari, what word could we use for geometric? Exponential. Okay. State whether the graph would be linear or exponential. So right here, going right along with that. Write the requested formulas. Okay and answer the question. So at the very end, we're gonna have a question. Now, in the box over here, it says this. It's really important to keep things organized and nice and neat and stuff like that. If you use a table or something like a table to keep things organized, it's gonna make it easier, okay? Now, we're gonna come up with a formula that's very famous in math, but we're gonna do it using the skills that we've been talking about for the last little while. You will probably need your calculator for this entire assignment, because not because it's hard, but because the numbers might be, get really big or really small really quickly. So this one says the sum of the interior angles of a triangle. So we've got three sides. We add up the, the angles on the inside is 180. The sum of the interior angles of a quadrilateral, so if it's got four sides, is 360. So like if you've got a rectangle or something, add up the angles on the inside, and that's a 360. The sum of the interior angles of a pentagon, five sides, is 548, 540 degrees. And it continues. So we're going to write this down off to the side. I'm going to leave a little bit of space above because it's kind of weird to start with a three. How many degrees there were there if we had three sides? What was it? 180. The next one was if it had four sides, what was it? Megan? 360. 360. Would you write down the next one for five? Isaac, what's the next one? 540. Okay, now, if we ignored all of this, could you come up with the next one? Could you come up with six? Hello. Ari. 620. Anybody else? What'd you get? You said 720. Okay. Ari, how'd you get 620? How much is it going up? Okay. How much is it going up? What? How did you get 720? Oh, well, I think I was looking at the first number, like the 135, mm -hmm. and I lost 1357. Oh, 135. Oh, so the next one's 7? Oh, that's interesting. And then you got 720. That's, that's really interesting. I don't think that would work all the time, but that's interesting that you got that. Anybody else? Marcus? Added 180. Is the difference between every set of terms, is it 180? Okay, so the next one would be, um, Ari did it in her head, she got uh, 620. It's actually 720. And what if we went the other way? What if we put a two right here? Trey? Not quite. You're close. It is zero. Very good. And if we put a one right here, just follow the pattern. Negative 180. Very good. Okay, let's pause right there. Is that enough to say whether it's arithmetic, geometric, or neither? Yes. I see some shaking heads. Okay. Isaac, what do you think it is? Arithmetic. Can you tell us why you think it's arithmetic? Same amount every time. So we call that, we have a fancy name for that. We call that the common difference. Common difference is 180. 
Okay, Allie, linear exponential. Linear, because linear always goes along with arithmetic. And then we're going to write down the general formula. So the general formula, remember, looks like this. For arithmetic, it's going to be d times n plus a naught. For geometric, it's going to be a naught times the common ratio raised to the n. Well, we've got part of that. What part of that do we have? Shaley? We have the difference. So we're going to do 180 times n. And then Damien, finish this off for us. What else do we need here? Ooh, very good. We're going to subtract 360. Tell us where you got the 360 from. Yeah, minus 180 again. So if you want to get to the zeroth term, if you want to get to A naught, you're going to subtract 180 again, and we're going to get to negative 360. So there it is. So arithmetic, linear. Here's the formula. And then would you do the last part right here? It says, what will the sum of the interior angles be for a dodecagon? That's a fancy name for a 12-sided polygon. Okay, do for 2, deca is 10, so you add the 2 and the 10 together. What do you do if you want to find how many degrees there are on the inside of a 12-sided parallelogram or sorry, the polygon? You can all get it. Marcus, what do we do? You plug in a 12. A sub 12 is going to be how many degrees there are on the inside of a dodecagon. So A sub 12, 180 times 12 minus 360. And I do not know my 12 times tables that much or my 180 times tables. And then I'd have to subtract 360. Bradley? Raise your hand if you got 1,800. Ooh, very good. So the answer is 1,800 degrees. There's the answer on that one. Okay, any questions? Megan. Well, this is kind of more related to the dodecagon. I thought it was, I thought it, if, 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 wait, well, maybe that's the 12-sided one because I, how do I explain this? Um, I've heard of a dodecahedron before, and uh -huh. I always thought that was the 12-sided one. A, do, a dodecahedron is a 12-sided, but it's it's a three-dimensional figure. Oh, this okay. is a dodecagon, so it's just a two, two-dimensional oh, figure. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay, all right, let's slide down here, take a look at this one. Fidget spinners, these were all the rage several years ago when I wrote these notes. And this is pretty much true, I kind of looked this up. Fidget spinners used to be so popular, the price went up 15% every single week. The original cost was $3. So we're going to do what we did just a second ago. We're going to make a list off to the side. How much was it to start with? Don't say anything out loud. How much was it to start with? And what week was that? How much was it to start with? And what week was that? Cooper. $3 Okay, three dollars that start started at week one. I'm good with the three dollars. Okay, remember we've done some problems like this before. This is kind of like where we're keeping track of time. When we click a stopwatch so that we can keep track of the time that's gone by, what does the stopwatch read out right when we click it? Zero. So what are we going to start with? We're going to start with zero. So on week zero, it was three dollars. Okay, now. We're going to come back here and we've got to figure out how much was it after one week. So after one week, it had a price increase. It went up 15%. We need to take that $3 and we need to multiply it by something. Megan's got her hand up. Anybody else? Trey's got his hand up. Marcus has his hand up. Ari, we did something like this at the very beginning of class up in the warm-up. Megan, what is it? It is, uh, you, you multiply it by, you, I'm sorry, you multiply it by uh, 1.15. Why 1.15? Because it's 100% plus the extra 15%. Ooh, I love the way she said that. It's 100% plus the 15%, so we're going to do 1.15. So we're going to do $3.45. So we're going to do $3.45. We're going to put that there. 
Can somebody raise their hand and tell us how we're going to find out how much it costs after two weeks? And it's a little surprising. It's not $3.90. Troy? Can you do $3.90 plus one point one five? Exactly right. We're going to do that last answer. So I'm going to take that last answer and I'm going to multiply it by 1.15. That's going to be 115% of the 345. So we actually end up with, if I were to write this down, this is going to be $3.96. Close. Seven. 97 cents. Very good. Whoops. After week two, it's $3.97, right? Yes. Okay. All right. Now, I'm not going to round here, but I am going to take that last thing and I'm going to do it again. Ooh, wow, we're already up to $4.56. So after week three, it's $4.56. Arithmetic or geometric? Geometric. What do you think? Geometric. It's going to be geometric. Whoops. Bradley, can you tell us why you think it's geometric? Very good. We've got a common ratio. We're timesing by 1.15 every single time. So, Allie, linear exponential here. Exponential. Exponential is always going to go along with geometric. Nth term formula. So, we're going to need to write a sub n. Remember, we've always got that ratio in there. So, what's the ratio here, Damien? What's the ratio? Yep, 1.15. Raise that to the N. Need one more thing. Marcus. The three. What it is for zero. The zeroth term, the initial term, whatever that happens to be. So it's going to be three. So there's our formula for that. And then would you throw this into your calculator? Would you find out the price after 10 weeks? Price after 10 weeks. Tristan, you're punching buttons on your calculator. Tell me what you're doing. I, I think it's close to that. Tell me how to do it. Very good. We're going to find a sub 10. What he's doing is he's plugging in a 10. So a sub 10, the price after 10 weeks is going to be 3 and then 1.15 raised to the 10th. And what did you say you got? So tell me what 12.14 means. $12. Very good. $12.14. So we're going to take this. We'll just kind of verify. All looks good. Ooh, did he round right? Absolutely. Nice job. So this is $12 and, whoops, make that look right. $12 and 14 cents. Well done. Any questions? Okay. Cooper, is this hard? Pretty easy. Okay. Cam, are we doing okay? we all right with this? Not bad, right? Okay. It's basically the same stuff we've been doing. We just have to read in between the lines a little bit. So here's the next problem. There's a 100-pound lump of wapidium. That's radioactive wapiti dung. True story. Sure it is. Okay. In the side slab, and it has a half-life of one day. Remember what that means is every day, half of it decays away, disappears. Good thing in this case. Half-life means it loses 50% of its mass every day. It loses 50% every day. So what percent is left? If it loses 50%, what percent is left? 50% is left. Okay. So what does it start off as? How much is there? 100. What day does that correspond to, Cooper? Zero. Thank you, Cooper. Okay, corresponds to zero. What, what is it after one day goes by? 50. Two days? 25. 25. Three days? 12.5. 12.5. It just keeps going by like that. Tristan, arithmetic geometric.
What do you think? Okay, if it's arithmetic, it's got to go by the, down by the same amount every single day. Okay. Is it going down by the same amount every day? No, but it is going down by the same ratio. I'm, I've got 50% left, 50% left, 50% left. I'm always going down by a half. So I've got my common ratio. Common ratio is one half. Or could I just do that as 0.5? Because that's what percent is left. Okay, so this is going to be geometric. Camry, linear exponential, exponential, explicit formula, or we could call that a general formula or nth term formula. It's going to be a sub n, and I need a naught. Damien, what's a naught? A naught is 100. What's the base here? What's the ratio? Trey, go. Yeah. <laughs> One half, okay, which I'm going to put in as 0.5 and we're going to raise that to the end. Now, this one does ask for recursive. We don't use recursive very often, but we're going to tell it what's the first term. Or in this case, if you want to put what the zeroth term is, that's totally okay because that's kind of where we start. We start off because we've got a good reason to start off with a zero. We start off with 100 and then we say, hey, if you want to get to the next term, which is a sub n, you take the one right before it, the previous term, which is a sub n minus 1. And Tristan, what are we multiplying by every single time? 0.5. So we put a 0.5 in front of it, and we are all set to go. There's the recursive formula. Yeah. What kind of science lab is this? It's a really disgusting science lab. <laughs> Sounds fun. How do we figure out how much wapidium there is after nine days? Shaylin. Ooh, very good. Did you hear what she said? Say it again, will you? Plug in the nine into the explicit formula. Remember, this is what's nice about explicit formulas or nth term or general formulas, whatever you want to call them, is you can say, hey, I want to know how much there is after 400 days. Plug in a 400. We want to know after nine days. Can somebody tell me what it is? Yeah. 0 0.20. We good there? Okay. So... 0 0.20, and this is well, I mean, pounds. Just 0 0.2 yeah, 0 0.2 would work fine. Okay, now, I want to talk about this for just a brief second. The reason why the base in example 2 is a 1.15, and the base in example 3 is 0.5, and I'm actually going to write 0.50, is because it was a percent increase or decrease here we went up 15 percent and here we went down 50 percent so this is a hundred percent plus 15 percent this is a hundred percent minus 50 percent so these are both adjustments on 100 percent we're either doing a hundred plus 15 percent or we're doing a hundred minus 50 percent that's why we get that okay now here's the last one there is a thought question down at the bottom. If you want to take a look at that, it's kind of interesting. So a salesperson took over a sales route that had 17 customers. Right when they took over, it had 17 customers. She is adding two customers every single month. What do you want to write down first? We're going to figure this out. If this was your route and you were going to say, hey, how many customers can I have, a, you know, a year from now or whatever it is, what would we start off with? What are we going to write down? Isaac, give me a guess. The zeroth term. So I'm going to put a zero right here. How many customers does she have when we kind of started the stopwatch on this one? Danny, do you agree? Yes. Yep. One month later. Allie, how many customers does she have a month later? 19. Cooper, what about after two months? After two months. 
21. Three months, Tristan. 23. Is that enough to figure out what the pattern is? Okay. I'm going to say the questions. Don't say anything out loud. I'm just going to call on some people in a minute. Arithmetic or geometric. Don't say anything. Once you know that, you should know linear exponential. And I'm hoping you've got a reason for what you said. And then we're going to do the explicit recursive. Okay. Ella, arithmetic or geometric? Arithmetic. Can you tell us why? Adding two every time. We're adding two every single time. We've got a name for that. Somebody tell me what the name is for that. If we're adding two every single time. Go ahead, L. Common difference. So D equals two. Okay, Peyton, is it going to be linear or exponential? It's going to be linear for sure. And then we're going to write down A sub N equals, somebody help me out. Bradley? 2n plus 17. Excellent there. Recursive. What do you want to start off with, Cooper? A sub what? A sub 1 equals 19. Is it okay to start with the first one? Sure. We could start with the zeroth one if we wanted to. And then we're going to say to get to the next one, we're going to take the one right before it. And what do we always do here? We're going to add 2. Very good. Okay. So there's the recursive formula. And then which formula do you want to use? For how many customers she has after a year? And how do we find that? What do you think? By the way, there were some complaints earlier, and I know my fourth grade is going to complain. Gosh, why do we have to do notes? We do the notes to learn, and you can kind of consider this part of your assignment, because that's what an assignment is. We're just all about learning here. What do you think? Plug in 365. That's one idea. Yep. Plug in a 12. Anybody else got an idea? Plug in a 52 for 52 weeks. This is, she's adding two customers every single month. How many months in a year? 12. So what are we finding here? We're finding a sub 12. So we're going to plug it in right here. We're going to do two times 12 plus 17. Would you figure out how many customers she has? Cooper, what'd you get? 41. 41. 41, and we'll just spell it out here. Customers. Okay? She has 41 customers. Okay, are there any questions? All right. Would you circle the self-assessment? Would you read the little problem down below? Just read it. You don't have to do it. And then we'll take a look at a problem from your assignment. 